the single most important thing that happened in this epic was the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. That, that, that basically was crossing of the chasm, which said that Bitcoin is not a multi hundred billion dollar asset class. Bitcoin is a 10 to a hundred trillion dollar asset class. So that was a 10 X to a hundred X. And that will ripple to the rest of the world, right? However, the US goes, it'll go to Singapore, the cool. UAE, the EU, and it, there are even signs that this is, it's already rippled into Hong Kong, but it may ripple back into China. And so ultimately I think uh, 2024 will definitely be viewed as a pivotal year, but I don't see how you can view it as anything other than incredibly auspicious uh, for the adoption of Bitcoin by nation states, large banks, institutional investors. While we might not fully grasp its impact for a few more years, the January approval of several spot Bitcoin ETFs by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission marked a historic moment. This event ushered in a new era for Bitcoin and the broader digital assets space. According to MicroStrategy founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor, the SEC's green light provided Bitcoin with the necessary boost to potentially grow from a multi-hundred billion dollar asset to one worth $10 trillion or even $100 trillion. Saylor believes these approvals also triggered a significant political shift in the United States, demonstrating to Wall Street the vast opportunities within the emerging industry. Speaking at the Libertarian National Convention on Saturday, former U.S. President and leading Republican Party candidate Donald Trump reiterated his support for Bitcoin and crypto. He pledged to foster industry growth in the U.S. if re-elected in November. To an enthusiastic crowd, Trump declared, I will stop Joe Biden's crusade to crush crypto. I will ensure that the future of crypto and Bitcoin will be made in the USA, not driven overseas. I will support the right to self-custody for the nation's 50 million crypto holders. With your vote, I will keep Elizabeth Warren and her allies away from your Bitcoin, and I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. During a recent interview with Peter McCormick, Host of the What Bitcoin Did podcast, Saylor emphasized that a wind of change is sweeping through Washington. He cautioned anti-crypto politicians that they must either adapt or face the consequences of opposing an industry ready to fight back with all its might. Saylor added that with Wall Street and the banks now on board the Bitcoin and crypto movement, these politicians will eventually have no choice but to surrender and acknowledge the mainstreaming of the digital assets space. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. The single most important thing that happened in this epic was the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. That, that, that basically was crossing of the chasm, which said that Bitcoin is not a multi hundred billion dollar asset class, Bitcoin is a 10 to a hundred trillion dollar asset class. So that was a 10 X to a hundred X. So we got that from this, this regime, but I think in the meantime, uh, the SEC has basically been very, very obstructionist, uh, you know, and at war with the entire crypto industry. And we know that, you know, suing all the crypto exchanges, suing a lot of the entrepreneurs. And what we didn't get, we, we got um, like a, a minimalist embracement of Bitcoin, embracing of Bitcoin a by reluctant. the CEO. <laughs> Very reluctant under, under protest. Yeah. Embracing. And then there were a couple of things that happened that were triggers. Uh, the SEC denied and has been stalling uh, the approval of options trading on these spot ETFs. It's slowing them down. So just, you know, those are coming a year or two years later than they probably ought to come. If you agree that Bitcoin is a spot asset, why not approve the options uh, for the same spot ETFs? And then the SEC uh, denied in-kind in creates. So you couldn't just trade your Bitcoin for the ETF. And so that both of those make the spot ETFs inferior. And then uh, the SEC put forth SAB 121 that made it impossible for a bank to custody Bitcoin. So we got the minimal uh, acceptance of, of Bitcoin. It's like the minimal thing I can do to legitimize it. But these other logical things let let the banks custody, let people hedge it, and you know let them trade Bitcoin for securities. These things, which would normally be cust they're normal and customary in any other asset, they were denied, and so we're going at a very slow rate. Well, I think that that created a lot of friction between yeah. the Bitcoin community and the SEC, right? Then you have the friction between the crypto community and the SEC. 
which well, I don't have to go over it, yeah. right? There's a hundred stories, man. And that was exacerbated by the fact that over the course of four years, the SEC never put forth uh, a digital assets framework, right? So it, you've got an entire industry and for it to live, it needs, a, you, you need a way to establish a digital commodity versus a digital security versus a digital exchange versus a digital currency. And the position of, of the regulator in this case was, I'm not giving you any framework. And the implication is you guys all have to just roll over and die. So how do you tell 400 million people that support an industry and the entire industry that they all just have to cease operating, right? And so, so that's a very, uh, a very obstructionist view, like a non-constructive view toward, <laughs> toward the crypto industry. And then I think the third, the third thing that happened here is we had a lot of banks. You know, there are rumors in the market that there were banks that spent a hundred million dollars or more to get ready to do Bitcoin custody. Okay, so you have a bunch of banks spending money; they're ready to do it, and then Sab 121 is just capriciously denying them of the ability to do it without explanation. That brought the the Sab 129 debate because. Sorry, SAB 121 means Wall Street, the banking law, the bankers, the crypto lobby, and the Bitcoin lobby, all four of those constituencies all, all side together on the same issue. So that being the case, the SAB 121 repeal comes up, and then the position of the administration is we're proactively going to veto it. And now you basically have the administration against Wall Street and crypto, and Bitcoin. On May 16th, the Senate passed the Congressional Review Act resolution overturning the SEC's Staff Accounting Bulletin 121. This accounting rule had imposed stringent capital requirements on crypto custodians, making it difficult for banks to provide crypto custody services. Before the House voted to repeal SAB 121, the White House issued a notice threatening to veto the resolution and reinstate the SEC's accounting rule. According to Cody Carbone, the Chief Policy Officer of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, after the resolution was sent to President Biden's desk last week, he had 10 days to either veto the decision, sign it to overturn SAB 121, or do nothing by the deadline. If Biden takes no action by the June 3rd deadline, the bill will automatically become law if Congress is in session, or it will face a pocket veto if Congress is not in session. As the deadline draws closer, the entire cryptocurrency industry awaits Biden's decision. However, it is important to note that the president had previously promised to veto the resolution. On May 8th, the administration issued a statement strongly opposing H.J. Resolution 109, arguing that it would disrupt the SEC's efforts to protect investors and safeguard the broader financial system. Despite this ominous declaration, Michael Saylor believes the resolution will not be vetoed. In a recent interview with Peter McCormick, host of the What Bitcoin Did podcast, Saylor shared his perspective on the situation. He remains optimistic that the resolution will prevail, reflecting a broader shift in political attitudes towards the cryptocurrency industry. Here are more clips from his interview with McCormick. And you have the welling up of frustration over four years, which, which reached a fever pitch. And the combination of that plus the ETH ETF coming up for approval with the expectation that it's going to be denied, punctuated by the lawsuits against Uniswap and MetaMask, which kind of are what caused people to conclude it would be denied. I mean, we all thought it'd be denied two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be denied. The entire consensus, even the Ethereans thought it'd be denied. So that brings everything to a head. The bill goes to the House, it passes, then it, then it moves into the Senate and it passes. That's a shocker. And then of course, Godzilla walks into the room the, the, the Trump card, right, is Trump, and Trump becomes crypto engaged, and Trump comes down in favor of crypto. If you believe in crypto, you better vote for me. And then the next thing you see is the polls flip, and the Republican front runner is ahead of the incumbent, right? And when Trump flips Biden in the polls, now you see the entire Democratic Party flip. And so I think in the past few days, this literally happened over the weekend, mm. I think. This weekend, I think you saw you saw the political wind change direction. This became a political issue. The strategists think, wait a minute, 80 million people with the Coinbase account or 80 million Americans with crypto and a big crypto lobby, and we're going to be on the wrong side of this. 
there is no one that's gonna vote for you because you're anti-crypto or anti-Bitcoin. No, there are no votes. There is an army of people that'll vote against you. So I think the White House changed policies, the Democratic Party changed policies. The signal of that was uh, Chuck Schumer mm. in the Senate voting in favor of the repeal of Sub 121. And you can see why he might. Basically, Wall Street's adopted crypto. Wall Street's adopted Bitcoin. They want to custody it. They want to securitize it. And the crypto industry is just fed up. I mean, they've had enough. And, you know, it's like, I think Sun Tzu says, you've got your enemy cornered, leave them with an escape. Okay, I, I think that the, that the regulators overplayed their hand in this regard, or a regulator overplayed their hand. If you basically got an industry that represents 80 million Americans and their only option is to fight you or die, it's a battle to the death, right? It's, you know, that's a very difficult fight. You, you know, you polarized it. So I think that uh, the dam burst this weekend, Monday morning, uh, the policy of the administration flipped. And now I think they realize that they're best to accommodate you know, give Wall Street what it wants, give the banks what they want. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of details yet to be figured out, like what will happen next. But um, all of the signals in the market suggest that the Republicans will be violently pro-crypto, pro-Bitcoin, and the existing administration, the Democrats, will uh, will move to accommodate and, reluctantly pro you know <laughs> they will move to accommodate and and, and stop taking a, such a an obstinate position i think 2 weeks before the world looked like bitcoin was going to be the only asset securitized and and offered as a spot etf by the wall street establishment and it was going to spread as the one legitimate crypto asset I think right now, uh, the best expectation is the crypto asset class will be legitimized, supported by both parties. There's an industry. Crypto is an asset class. There's an entire range of use cases, 24-7 digital trading, digital art, and, uh, you know, NFTs, tokens, you know, decentralized this, functionality, DeFi. There's a lot of things that will, will be considered and, and a more open light, and um, Bitcoin will be the leader of the crypto asset class. According to a social media post by senior Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric, a bipartisan group of House lawmakers has written a letter to SEC Chair Gary Gensler. The letter urges the Commission to approve spot Ethereum ETFs and other digital assets, emphasizing that such products provide investors with access to cryptocurrency in a regulated, transparent, and safe manner. The letter states that the approval of spot Bitcoin exchange-traded products marks a pivotal moment for both digital assets and our financial markets. The lawmakers urge the Commission to apply a consistent and equitable approach when reviewing future applications for other digital asset-backed ETPs. Specifically, they believe the same principles used in the approval of spot Bitcoin ETPs should be applied to the evaluation of pending Ether ETP applications, as the legal considerations for Bitcoin also apply to Ethereum. In his post, Eric notes that the letter references other digital assets beyond Ethereum suggesting that the ETF industry might be preparing to embrace a wider range of cryptocurrency ETFs. This aligns with Michael Saylor's prediction that other cryptocurrencies and digital assets will gain prominence alongside Bitcoin in mainstream markets. Although Saylor is a Bitcoin maximalist, he acknowledges that sharing the spotlight with other digital assets can strengthen Bitcoin's position in the financial market and benefit the overall digital asset space. Please share your thoughts on Michael Saylor's interview in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.